Hello everyone, welcome to the Ask Dr. Lynn Show where I answer questions from regular everyday industrial bakers. Many of these bakers come to bakerpedia.com daily to seek solutions for their technical issues. So hey there and thank you for joining me today. I am Dr. Lynn from Bakerpedia, the world's largest online resource for technical baking information and the only place you should go first when you need all your technical questions answered on the go. Have a burning question? Wikipedia it. And still haven't solved all your questions? Place any comments on the topics that you are researching on Wikipedia, and I'll do my best to answer them on this show. All right, here goes. I'm gonna to focus today's show on improving gluten quality and shelf life. Here are four things that you can try. Age flour or use oxidizing agents. Try fermentation and reduce water absorption. Let's go into each of this. Age flour. When flour is aged sometimes up to several months, oxidation happens and this restructures the proteins within the flour. This forms more bonds, making the gluten stronger, which lead to a more elastic dough. Creating aged flour is easy, but it requires space. After milling, the flour is allowed to naturally air out and oxidize until the desired physical properties are reached. Therefore, artisan bakeries to this day don't need chemical methods of aging because they still use flour in bags that have been aged naturally. Oxidizing agents. Ingredients like ascorbic acid, azodicarbonamide, bromate, calcium bromate, potassium iodate, calcium peroxides, enzymes like glucose oxidase, and so on. They're just a few examples of oxidizing agents. Oxidizers were originally used because they were discovered to quicken the aging of the flour. The first true oxidizing agent was ascorbic acid, discovered for use in 1967 for a continuous mix system. So, oxidizing agents have been used for a very long time. How did this come about? Well, originally, flour was naturally aged through exposure to its environment. But since this can take up to a month, oxidizing agents are used to increase disulfide bridges between the gluten molecules. This is especially helpful in high output and stressed systems, where oxidizers help gluten reformation, strength, and elasticity. Therefore, increasing oxidizing agents in your formula would increase the strength of the gluten. Fermentation. Oh boy, this process is key to strengthening the gluten proteins. In this day and age, hardly anyone knows anymore about the effect of fermentation on gluten strength, mainly because everyone is so focused on the speed of the lines and depends so much on oxidizing agents. I would like to remind all the bakers out there, as you clean up your labels, don't forget about this key process. When you extend bulk fermentation time, you just let the yeast and the bacterial enzymes act on unfolding the protein structure. So this naturally introduces disulfide bonds that naturally strengthens the gluten structure. How else do you think certain artisan bakers out there can use 10% protein in flour to make highly structured bread? Want to see the strength of your dough improve naturally without oxidizers? Try increasing your bulk fermentation time. Water absorption is a tricky one. There comes a point where there isn't enough water absorption and you get a bucky dough with proteins that haven't been fully optimized. On the other hand, too high a water absorption will dilute the protein network and make it weaker. So check out this page and learn why optimal water absorption is so crucial to your gluten strength.
One of the reasons why whole wheat bread molds faster is due to its moisture. It is too high in moisture and water activity in order for it not to mold. Therefore, calcium propionate or cultured wheat are included in these recipes to prevent molding. Remember, cultured wheat has natural propionates in there. And for both CalPro and cultured wheat to work properly, the pH of the dough needs to be below 5.6. Therefore, get a pH meter to understand your pH when you start adding these preservatives into your whole wheat bread. Everyone seems to like the effect of cultured wheat these days. So use it wisely. If you're experiencing mold before six days, don't forget to sanitize your area first. Then look into adding cultured wheat. If you're talking about improving the shelf life um, or the texture of the product, look into our staling page. Staling is affected by both process and ingredients. Enzymes like amylase is like the golden key to fight this process. But there are other methods you can also use to fight this on this page. Remember, to extend your shelf life, you need to fight mold and increase softness of the product. Well, that's all I have for today. Okay, till the next time, bakers. Quality problems? Check out Bakerpedia first.